Hello and welcome! This video is about implementing FFT in real time inside of the microcontroller and plotting the spectrogram using simple Python script. As a base framework, I will use a project for recording I2S microphone using DMA. So you can refer to my previous videos if you want more detailed explanation of the code I'm using. So basically, I record um, two uh, I2S uh, microphones using DMA and I have um, circular buffers to sample audio data uh, in real time at 32 kilohertz. So let's get started. The first thing you need to do is to install digital signal processing library to your project. And again, I have a separate video that shows how to do that in detail. And here I will go through it um, briefly. So first you open the uh, Cubemix uh, file, then you press software Prax, select components and you press this button and you search for DSP digital signal processing and you will find DSP library you just need to select and press OK then you will have a separate category software packs you open it and you just need to tick this box you then save the file and the, the library will be installed, will be integrated to your project. Uh, then within main.c, you need to include rmas uh, header file. Then you open the properties of the project. And inside of paths and symbols, inside of symbols you just need to include this symbol and if you're using for example cortex m7 microcontroller i guess you need to include uh, cm7 uh, symbol implementing fft using dsp library is really straightforward first you need to define an um, fft instance uh, basically variable with uh, this data type and since I'm working with um, float numbers, I have uh, this F F32 in the end. Then we need to initialize um, this um, FFT instance by calling this function. So we provide um, the address of the instance. And the second argument is, um, is the length of the FFT or the, the length of the buffer. And it's worth mentioning that um, the, the length um, should be uh, the, uh, a number um, base of 2 for example 256 or 128 or 64 for example so in, in that way uh, 50 will work uh, efficiently the next step is to apply FFT of course uh, in my situation when um, half of the buffer is full um, I apply FFT, but um, since I'm um, recording two microphones, I use this for loop to extract the data of the first microphone. Then I call this uh, function to apply FFT. So first argument is the address of the instance. We have the input uh, buffer. Then we have the output buffer. And the last argument is zero because we are applying FFT, not inverse. Then um, this uh, output buffer will uh, hold the complex numbers. Uh, in even positions, we have the real part, and in odd positions, we have the imaginary part of, of the of the complex numbers. But uh, in my situation, I don't care about the phase information. I just want to extract the absolute uh, values of uh, frequency weights. That's why I call another uh, function uh, to uh, to extract, to compute the absolute values of, of the complex numbers. So we have the input argument uh, and I define this the same uh, buffer as an out output uh, as an output buffer. So after calling this function, this uh, buffer to be specific, the, the half of this buffer will hold uh, the absolute uh, values of the frequency weights. Then I um, use um, uh, UART to send this data to the computer and not all the time I have a counter when when it reaches a certain value I, I just send this um, data and inside of the computer 
I have a Python script to plot the spectrogram in real time. And when the buffer is full, um, I do the same operation, but I don't send data through reward. So in, in your situation, um, the, the data, how you sample might be slightly different, but in any situation, you need a uh, um, maximum four lines of code uh, to implement FFT. Uh, first, you um, define FFT instance, then you initialize, you just define the buffer length, then you apply FFT, and if necessary, you can use this uh, function to, to compute just the absolute values if you don't need uh, phase information. And also, let me show the configuration of UART. So I am using UART2. I enabled it by choosing asynchronous mode. And I keep all the parameters by default. I it didn't change anything. And I en enabled uh, DMA. Uh, I'm transferring data, so I'm, I and I, I chose TX, and inside of um, interrupt settings, you need to enable them. And in um, modern STM social to microcontrollers, um, you can send UART data to the computer through ST-Link instead of using a separate hardware, separate uh, serial converter. In my situation, I'm using STM social to F4 discovery, so I just solder this two pins of the microcontroller to the corresponding ST-Link pins. But in your situation, um, um, this uh, connection uh, yeah, might be already implemented inside of the PCB, so you don't need to solder. And you can refer to the user manual if you're, uh, if you're bored, if you want to have more information about this. Finally, let me explain the Python script. Um, it's very simple. Uh, first, we define the serial port and the COM port number. In my situation, COM port 7. Then uh, I have uh, the parameters of the plot. So I use a polar bar to plot the spectrogram. Then I have um, a, a function to, to receive uh, data through UART. So um, I receive um, data. Then um, I convert these bytes into float numbers. And then I have um, another function to update um, the plot uh, periodically. So basically, I take these um, values and I update uh, the polar bar. And also pay attention that uh, I run this read UART. Uh, function in a separate thread, so we we don't have any delay when when getting data through UART. Finally, let me show how things work. I already flashed the microcontroller. I resume the code, and when I press the the user button, uh, the microcontroller will start recording the microphone and and, and sending uh, and applying FFT and sending data through UART. Then I already running this um, um, the, the Python script, and if I make some noise, we can clearly see it in in, in, in this bar, in this plot. I'm also playing a pure two um, K, two kilohertz uh, sign uh, signal, I, and we can clearly see it in in this in this plot. And again, I. I play another sign signal, but at 4 kilohertz. So that means that everything is working right now. Thank you for watching my video. If you're into robotics and SM security programming, please subscribe to my channel. Also, if you want to have more interesting projects, please buy me coffee by joining my community where I share news and insightful information about the same social problem in the part of bodies. You can also ask related questions. You can find all the information in the description below.